Ever had one of your favorite electronics fry itself? That's exactly what happened to my Roland 30 to board while working on my project. My PC was able to detect the board, and I was also able to upload Blink LED sketch to the board. Then what was the issue? The real issue was more serious. My inbuilt LED stopped working and 3.3 volt rail was showing 0 volt. It left my board almost useless, and I was not able to use OLED display and all other 3.3 volt sensors on this board. Root coils was fried 3.3 volt regulator because I saw smoke coming out from it. So I started searching for the schematic of this board, and I found it. From the schematic I confirmed that blown 3.3 volt regulator was responsible for the non-functional LED in 3.3 volt rail. So I quickly searched the net for the similar issues and I found topics where some users had similar issues. As per this user, he accidentally supplied reversed voltage to the board, and due to lack of short circuit and thermal protection he fried his regulator. Found another victim where he shared that many regulators used in budget-friendly boards can't handle high current demands, and that's often the culprit. So is it the end of this board? No. Today, I'll show you how I revived it with a simple repair. I bought replacement regulator as shown here and I took cheap USB microscope, soldering tools and dead Lulin 30 to board and started replacing the blown regulator. Here is the actual footage taken from the microscope. So my first step is to remove fried regulator from the board. I took desoldering wick and started removing the regulator as shown here. I am fast forwarding the footage to reduce the video length. Regulator was quickly came off. Now I clean the pads using desoldering wick. And here is the replacement regulator which I bought from online store. Let me show you both fried and working regulators side by side. Applied some soldering paste on the pads for the sound joint. And now it is time to solder the regulator on the board. This cheap USB microscope really helped to get this job done efficiently and quickly. First I soldered one side of the pins and then rotated the board and soldered other side pins to the board. And finally regulator soldered perfectly. And this is the board after successfully replacing the voltage regulator. Will it work now? Let's see the moment of truth. Congratulations! The board started working again. The inbuilt LED started blinking again using the blink sketch we uploaded to the board in the starting of the video. This repair saved me from buying a new board, and I learned some important lessons. First, always check the power requirements of your project to avoid overloading components. Second, don't throw out your boards. Many issues can be fixed with a little effort. Finally, consider upgrading cheap regulators to higher quality ones to prevent future failures. If you've enjoyed this repair journey, Give this video a like and subscribe for more DIY electronics projects. Got a board you're thinking of repairing? Let me know your experience. I am DHK Dude, signing off.